Ladies and gentlemen, gather round because today we're going through the long term, the mid term and the short term for Bitcoin. Let's jump straight into this. We do have some on chain to show you as well. Uh, so let's just smash this uh, out of the park, uh, starting with the Bitcoin structure. OK, the most important part of this is can we hold this line? And if we lose this line, can we reclaim it as a trap? Or do we end this section of the run? And uh, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, guys, uh, usually with Bitcoin runs, what we see is a parabolic rise. And a parabolic rise essentially just means we slope up like this exponentially. Uh, once we do lose that kind of exponential curve and we break structure, then uh, we can expect to go down or sideways for the foreseeable future until we make new structure, right? Uh, so... If we are looking at today's price, guys, I know this is super convoluted, so let's get rid of this for now, right? We can see that, yes, we have just broken below this structural line on the index. This is super important because if we do um, maintain underneath this line, then we can quite easily retest it and push away from it down to our bull market barrier. And as you just saw, guys, we don't want to be below this little gummy worm, right? And the reason for that is when we do get below it, it essentially initiates a bear market, a small bear market or a long bear market, uh, but a bear market nonetheless. So we have to be careful with this one uh, because it's pretty much every single time. Every single time we have lost this, uh, then yeah, it's it's bad. It's bad for Bitcoin and we are just, just above it. We can kind of violate it a little bit. We can test the waters with this thing, uh, potentially down to 60K. And I'll explain uh, a, a little bit of evidence for potentially why we will get to 60K um, fairly soon anyway, uh, if, we, if we can't reclaim this anyway, right? But uh, as of right now, yes, below the line, we are kind of messing around it. We tried to reclaim this yesterday, uh, but we didn't have any decent inflows uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, and this is the wrong thing. There we go. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, we can see the inflows here. Uh, we actually had a negative day here uh, on uh on yesterday's day, right? <laughs> Net flow minus 190 million. Not great. Not great across the board here. Okay, and just keeping up with this long term before we do dive into the mid and short term here, guys. On chain, uh, looking at the macro here, it is still increasing. It is looking okay. All right. If we go to all here, um, we can't actually see anything. What the hell? <laughs> if we go to maybe six months here, yeah, it looks a little bit better there. So we can see we are making some progress here towards the upside in the bottom right of your screen, right? Uh, and with that, if we can't continue this uh, with the amount of electricity um, that the, these uh, miners are buying, right, then we can expect price to follow that pretty much uh, nail on the head, right? Every single top we've had, this has been super high, okay? As of right now, it's not actually uh, really, it's not super high. It's actually down here, okay? I don't know why this chart isn't displaying it. Let's just see if we can get this. Oh, yeah, so you can see it has gone down here, right? Uh, so, yeah, we want this to head back up again for the run to continue uh, like it has done pretty much every single run so far. So, yeah, not a great sign that this is dumped, but uh, overall, the fact that it's, it's trying to recover is a good sign, okay? It is a bullish sign. And again, we've got the inflows, uh, which would be a bearish sign, but we can we find that we do get inflows and outflows, um, pretty much more inflows and outflows generally, right? So that's, that's a bullish sign, but as of right now, yes, uh, quite a lot taken out of the market there, 190 million. All right, overall, as you guys know, I, I talk about this every video, but yes, we're in expansion. I'm not gonna explain how this works because I explained this last video, but uh, yeah, when it's when it's green, it's good and it's still green. Uh, we'll see if that remains green next week on Monday, so feel free to subscribe for that. Besides that, uh, if we are just looking more on the midterm here, guys, we can see, uh, yeah, liquidation heat map looking very, very uh, fruity right now would be the, the correct terminology because uh, yeah, it is, it is just a random walk right now. We are seeing people just smashing in orders, lots of bulls, lots of bears, lots of people uh, trying to make their bets here to see whether this runs over or to see whether this is yet another trap. Uh, me personally, guys, eight years in the space, eight years trading, uh, looking at these charts every single day, I will say uh, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look great, but we have trapped from here before, right? So if we do uh, go back to trading view here, right, we have trapped uh, similarly on this before. So uh, yeah, it's not too late right now uh, for us to actually head back up. Uh, if we can finish today 
essentially around 69k it's a fantastic sign but we need to close the day above there right so yesterday we talked about closing the day above 68.8 uh, we did smash it all the way up to about 70k but unfortunately uh, that was faded overnight right uh, so what we can see now is the fact that we are below this trend line which isn't a great sign the next major support here would be at 64.8 okay uh, I have some merits to say that we could potentially come down to 62.5 uh, and that's from a good friend of mine Willie Wu if we just get this on the screen right now okay this guy is uh, I think he's a shareholder in Glassnode or something like this but uh, he's a super respected on-chain analysis uh, guy in the space all right he's been around since the beginnings of Bitcoin uh, and he's basically saying right so the problem right now is open interest okay o open interest is very uh, positive right now uh, which is is bad okay because it means that uh, yeah I mean it means that there is a dooming dump, a gloomy, doomy dump around the corner uh, for us. And to reset that open interest, essentially what he's saying is 62K, right? 62.5 to be exact. Uh, and if we did get down there, we just bring up our chart again here, right? We can see 62.5 is, I mean, it's... It's not necessarily a huge level in terms of a, a, hor a horizontal support, right? But it is an area where we could have some kind of merit of, uh, of, of some kind of volatility around this area, right? But it's more of an average area. It's not like there's, there's an exact bottom here that we keep bouncing off of. Uh, this, is, this is definitely very random right now. Uh, but yeah, that 62.5 would reset the open interest, which is essentially good for us to start another pump up. So if we do get a dump today and we do head down, down to this level then uh, yeah I mean we could head up from that point and this would be a great area to potentially long if you are a bull right but uh, I am going to be waiting for all of these kind of uh, these downward sloping resistances to be broken after hitting this area if we if we go down anyway if this isn't a trap we have to be uh, neutral and non-biased on the on the channel right so we're looking for trades towards the upside uh, and uh, in in bearish scenarios as well right so yeah, if something like this did occur, this is essentially where I would be looking for a long, okay? Uh, once we do break that kind of sloping resistance, and then we basically just try and long that all the way up to 74K. So if we are looking at this in terms of a trade, it's massive. It's it's a ridiculous trade here, 15% up to this bad boy uh, and yeah, I think it will take time to get up there as well. So we could even extend uh, up even higher than that, right? It really depends. Uh, but we are just going to be uh, acting cautiously here. That's a little bit far in the future. If we do get a dump, we'll probably have to wait till Monday before any of this plays out. But uh, yeah, as of right now, what we're looking at is a potential wick forming. Uh, a lot of people have been messaging me saying, hey, Hamilton, uh, I know you're a big uh, believer in, in the theory of, uh, of the wicks, right? Of the wicks being absorbed towards the other side. And yes, this is true. Uh, and According to that theory, I can see what you guys are saying where we should be expecting a 66K to absorb this wick, right? But uh, what you might not be looking at here, guys, is the fact that we already did have a wick towards the downside, right? Uh, so uh, if you are going to be adding all of these up, then we've already... Oh, hello. Hello, mate. There we go. Beautiful stuff. We've already done this, right, already. All right. So uh, if we are going to look at the length of this wick on top of that to, to kind of look at it as new momentum, right, bear, bearish momentum, we can see uh, that that is, is it's, it's essentially fairly filled anyway, right? It's not something that's conclusive uh, and the main thing what I say is this wick is essentially invalid like I wouldn't be looking for this to be absorbed because it's already a wick that's absorbing a previous wick right hopefully that makes sense to some of you guys uh, but uh, the main point here the summary for this is essentially we need to get above 69k and we need to close above there today or tomorrow right uh, for this to remain a bullish trend and if this is going to remain a bullish trend all we're going to do here to, to get the best long possible is wait for this high to break right if we break 72k uh, we can literally smash this up to 78k super super easily uh, if you are a bit more cautious guys uh, you can take some profit at the all-time high it's a two percent trade I wouldn't be complaining at a 2% trade. That's fantastic. On a 10x leverage, you're looking at around 20% there. Really, really nice, okay? Uh, but um, there is merit to say that if we do break over this trend line one more time, because we have tested this four times already, right, on a daily, which is huge, okay, this has to be pretty weak by now. So uh, if we do get above this crucial level at 72K, guys, uh, my synopsis or my synopsis, whatever that correct word is, 
is that we do smash it up uh, and we, we go for another wave from that point, okay? Uh, I don't see us treading along this trend line so much, okay? Uh, and if we do tread along this trend line, it's actually a bad sign because it means that it's getting weaker over time. We're testing it a lot. It's going to get weaker, right? Um, think of it like a health bar. It's going to go down the more you hit it, right? So uh, we need to stay above it. We need to retest it. We need to smash up. And then we find that long entry where we get all of the monies, all right? In terms of my positions, my portfolio right now, guys, I am still holding my Bitcoin. I have not sold it just yet. And again, we have been building our position uh, from essentially down here anyway. Uh, obviously, we've been building it throughout the run. But uh, yeah, the newest kind of position we've been building is around this area. And we're still in the prof dog. We can come down to this 62.5 and still be in profit. So we're chilling out here. We are chilling. Uh, so let's relax and uh, let's, let's just play this by ear. But that's more of the investment side. Okay, and if you are an investor, guys one thing I'll be looking at here is this 80k area you guys know I talk about this a lot but this is the zone to really get in if you've got 500k to a mil or even 100k to a mil uh, this would be the area with the lowest risk where Bitcoin has got over that crucial resistance and uh, can really start flying and and this is where the the FOMO does come in from a lot of a lot of the 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 non-retail, the smart money will be like, okay, we smashed 80K. This is a similar scenario uh, to when we smashed 20K uh, on the way up here, right? So you can see we did get a pretty substantial amount of resistance around this area, right? And everyone thought that was it. We're going down from here. Uh, and then we just absolutely smashed through. And this is where it really smashed it, right? You can see this very clear, just monstrously parabolic. So we're looking for something similar here. And uh, yeah, you can actually see that it is the same middle line, right? It is the same middle line on this linear regressional growth curve, this rainbow indicator, right? Uh, so if we do get above that, yes, just more data to support us going absolutely parabolic once we get above 80k all right so uh, if you are waiting for that that's what I would uh, advise there uh, moving on here in terms of absolute uh, where Bitcoin is screwed from, I would just say, look, if we lose 55K, very, very bad. Uh, it's not necessarily the absolute end, okay, but it is it is something that we should worry about because we would be below this bull market barrier that we talked about, uh, and that would be bad because then we can that will end up being resistance, and it could force us into a, a bit more of a bearish uh, path here, okay, uh, at least through Q2 and 3 uh, anyway, right? So, or three and four. Where are we? Where are we in the year? <laughs> but carrying on here, I think that's the summary here uh, for Bitcoin. And again, just looking for this this trade from 72k up to 80. Uh, and then if, if you're investing, I would wait for 80k to break before really getting in. And then to the lower side, as you guys know, if we do dump down, I'm buying the dip once we break this kind of resistance that forms, right? That's, that's essentially my plan. Uh, at what point will I exit this? If we do get a major like a, a huge crash here and we lose 60k, right? I will be watching this area intently. Uh, I'm, I will more likely add to my position around this area if a low is formed uh, and I'll probably be trading it anyway. So uh, I mean, I'll probably make more money than I've lost in this dump anyway. So it's not really a problem. And that's really how I'm, I'm planning to, to, to kind of go for this one, right? But moving on to the midterm, the four hour here, we can see it's just a disgusting, horrible mess. It's just, it's grim. Look at this candle. Look at this disgusting, bearish engulfing, not respecting any of the moving averages just slamming it around really really bad price action here and i think there was uh what was this uh, a fed announcement or something yesterday i wasn't really uh, watching the news but uh yeah i mean i think all the markets did this anyway uh, and we can see that yeah it's, it's just not a great great little uh, predicament here uh, we did break over this this resistance but uh, as you guys know my plan here usually when we do this for a long is essentially uh, that we open a new candle, we retest, and if we break the high, then we enter, right? Uh, so that way we fade any traps, and this is a perfect example of why <laughs> of why we fade the traps, because it was a trap, okay? It was a disgusting trap, and not one I've seen, I haven't seen a trap like this in a while, guys, like four hours up, four hours down, uh, really, really grim, uh, but it does look like we're, we're trying to recover here, at least today, uh, we're testing, and we're, we're oscillating around this 200 EMA, uh, and if we can essentially break back above the high we made yesterday at 70k, it'll be fantastic. Uh, and yeah, I, I wouldn't actually advise longing that from there. Again, I'm looking at 72k, but uh, you could you could make an argument of longing that uh, with this 15 minute volume weighted ATR band. And talking about the 15 minute volume weighted ATR band, uh, we will go down to the short term here uh, where we can see this a little bit more fluidly. All right, so we can see here. 
uh, with this 15 minute, uh, this is the key zone to watch, right? With a 15 minute volume weighted ATR band, uh, we can see uh, that, uh, yeah, it is, is, is the area we've been fighting to get above, okay? If we can get above it, it's fantastic uh, because we get scenarios like this, right? Uh, so the 15 minute one is here, okay? So we get above it, we retest it, we break the high, and then boom, we lose it, then we go sideways again, right? So that's really what we're looking for here, just the beginnings of a decent wave. Uh, this was a good attempt, but it got faded as, as we just talked about. This is the four hour trap that we were just talking about, right? Uh, but on a lower time frame. Uh, and yeah, and uh, as you can see, it wasn't really respecting this 15 minute at all. Uh, the perfect scenario for this thing is uh, if we break it, we break above the 15 minute, we retest it, then we break the high, right? And then we can start targeting trades and exactly the same for the 60 minute one, right? If we break above it, retest, break the high, then uh, yeah, carry on, carry on, keep going, right? And that's really how we're gonna be making money if this does head up. Uh, besides that, not super interested here, it's super trappy. Uh, setting up a grid bot here, particularly if we're still in this area on Friday nights, is actually a pretty decent idea. If you don't know what a grid bot is, guys, uh, a grid bot in the most simple form for you guys to understand, if you are a beginner, is essentially, it's it's a bot where you set a range. So let's say we set a range between 66K and 70K, right? And we expect us to stay in this range over the weekend because traditional markets are closed. Therefore, the big money isn't gonna be influencing the market, right? Uh, let's say we're in this range and we're in the middle. What we're gonna do is set up a grid bot type these ranges in, all right? And what it's gonna do is actually layer in orders to the lower side, layer in orders to the upper side. So buys on this side, sales on this side, right? And then every time we fill an order, it's gonna, it's gonna obviously execute the order, right? And then as soon as we get a certain distance away or, or we hit a take profit, it's then gonna reinitiate that order automatically, right? This is what a grid bot is. It creates this grid, it refreshes it automatically. Bitcoin will start going volatile like this, and then it's just making you money without you doing anything, as long as we stay in this range. If we leave the range, you can then cancel all orders and then go from there. But uh, I'm just looking at this chart right now, it looks amazing, it's amazing. I might sell this as an NFT, it's that good. Okay, modern art. But uh, yeah, that is gonna be it for the short term. Hopefully this makes sense. I wouldn't be trying to draw patterns based on this just, just simply because of this trap. Uh, it's, it's gonna make the whole structure of this pattern very unreliable. Uh, a lot of people are gonna be trying to find this measure move. And yeah, maybe it does play play out, but uh, it's something from my experience, eight years in the space, it's, it's not, it's not gonna be something that I'm I'm too interested in, all right? I wanna see something a bit better, a little bit more fluid, uh, whereas this is just a trap where we've broken over resistance and it's messed up the whole thing. It's invalidated everything, right? So we're gonna wait, we're gonna be patient here, uh, and we're gonna see where it goes from this point, all right? And then besides that, as you guys know, if we do get a major dump, you guys know the deal here. And I'll actually show you an example of this on another coin, Gala. I know some of you guys love Gala. But uh, yeah, let's say Bitcoin does head down here, right? And we do visit the low 60s. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to lose these uh, these volume weighted ATR bands. And these volume weighted ATR bands will start coming down rapidly because it's meant to be plotting the average range over a distance. So if we're out of that range, naturally, this calculation is going to expand these. Okay, and the green ones are obviously the lower side of the ranges on each time frame and the red one's the higher side. So uh, you can see uh, the 60 minute range is between 71K and 66K, right? Just, just so that's clear. Uh, let's say we do dump through all of these, okay? One of the biggest edges that we have right now on the market is after the dump, okay? Uh, if we do reclaim this 60 minute, we can actually target along here all the way up all the way up to whatever uh, moving average uh, that is appropriate. Typically, I like to go for the uh, the price action channel on the WAD machine here, because it's just a great area that, that we will return to. Uh, but yeah, this, this kind of edge here, as these ranges come down, can be massive, okay? And it's even better if all of these three, if all of these three, hello, come on, there we go, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. If all of these three are kind of in the equal stance, like uh, kind of aligned like so, this is this is the ultimate golden goose signal here, right? This, if we can get above that, uh, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm actually going to turn these green just for a little bit of immersion here, okay? It's basically VR. It's basically VR at this point. Look at this thing, right? So if, just going to repeat my point here, right? Uh, if we do dump here today and we lose these volume weighted ATR bands, and again, all of you Patreons will have access to this and YouTube members, right? Uh, we will see, we will see us below this, but we'll see these trying to catch it up. And when we do reclaim this, right? And if they are aligned like so, if we reclaim more than one at a time, it's fantastic, okay? Uh, then what we're going to be looking for is a pumper rumper and a big old 
just a beefy pump, a beefy pump up here uh, for one or two percent, a huge edge on the market, fantastic stuff. Uh, and obviously watch out for the hourly uh, seven SMA as well. It's, it's also good to be over that at the same time, all right? Because usually when we do come down, we like to test the seven SMA and then have a reaction towards the downside to follow up, right? Uh, so if we are looking at this, yeah, we wanna be above these all after the dump. And that's, that's really the, the kind of scalping scenario if we do dump today. Towards the upside, it's essentially the same thing, but uh, it's, it's because it's a bull market, it's, it's pretty hard uh, to, to, to be longing, uh, sorry, to be shorting uh, once we do lose that. So let's say we do a, a similar scenario here where uh, Bitcoin starts smashing it towards the upside. Uh, all of these upper ranges, end up end up essentially aligned here and let's say the price of bitcoin is uh, up here okay then uh, what we can see here is yes a pretty similar scenario where we could easily find a short here but the problem with it being a bull market uh, and this works very well in the bear market because it's more neutral right uh, but uh, yeah looking for shorts in a bull market a big no-no generally okay if it's if it's looking good enough where uh, we're so far away from all the moving averages where there's just an air pocket here then yeah maybe you could be targeting that short but uh, incredibly risky okay just be i'd be more targeting longs here uh, from that and i already talked about how to do that right so uh, again if we get above this 15 minute retest break the high boom, get in the long, right? That's going to be a way better trade than trying to find a short after a run. Uh, but uh, with Bitcoin being in a macro long trend, uh, uptrend, right, we can see that this this being more plausible uh, if we do dump anyway to find this long uh, in a reaction. So yeah, a little bit of more of an educational video here today. And just an example of that here would be Gala. Okay, Gala is currently below the four hour volume weighted ATR band. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to 100x long this bad. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Never, never go high leverage on altcoins, guys. You will get destroyed. All right. But uh, once this does reclaim this bad boy, I am expecting a massive pump, uh, a massive pump. Uh, and we can see this if we do go back through Gala's history. OK, we do pump off this line a lot. All right. As you can see. But um, it's really when we lose it. OK, uh, this is, again, another example. You can just see this very, very clearly. Right. But uh, if if. If it's a scenario like this, then uh, yeah, there is money to be made for sure. Like ridiculous money to be made. Uh, we're talking about this one, even with a retest, 16%. All right, 16%. I know these look like tiny trades as well, but you're looking at 4% there. Okay, uh, you're looking at maybe 2 or 3% there. Uh, so yeah, this is a, an applicable edge, one that we are watching and we're waiting for this. This, this is actually more like similarly uh, to what we are at right now. Okay, you can see that that's a 47% increase. Okay, 47%. Uh, just from reclaiming this line. So yeah, just, just kind of sharing with you guys some of my edges here for free. Uh, and if you do want signals when all this stuff happens, I'm tracking a few coins that are doing this right now. Okay, this is the prime... This is the prime buy the dip scenario here, guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking for that recovery. And once that is confirmed... It's game on. It's game on. Let's go. Okay. Uh, be sure to check out some of my shorts. Thank you for liking the video if you have already. If you have already. If, you, if you've liked the video, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Leave me a comment. Let me know uh, any altcoins you would like to see. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out and goodbye. And let me know if you want more longer videos like this. We're doing a deep dive today. But uh, yeah, have a fantastic one. And I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Cheers.